This lovely looking thing is a new Porsche 911 Sport Classic and it's a little bit like a pair of limited edition Nike Air Jordan trainers because it's essentially a greatest hit of 911s from the past only updated with modern technology and performance. It's also quite expensive though because it's going to be made in small numbers it'll end up quite collectible like a set of Air Jordans. Now in this video I'm going to talk you through all the upgrades on this car, take it for a drive and yes I'm going to launch it to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour because I'm Mike Watson and you're watching Car Wow. Buy, sell, car, wow. Let's start this video by talking about the engine, which, because it's a 911, you can't see it. It's hidden. What do you can see are these fans? Anyhow, the big news is that it's the 3.8 litre twin turbo from the 911 Turbo and Turbo S. However, in the Turbo S, it puts out 650 horsepower and 800 newton meters of torque. But here, it delivers just 550 horsepower and 600 newton meters of torque. The reason is this has a manual gearbox and they needed to downgrade the torque for that gearbox, otherwise it will go bang. Also, the Sport Classic is rear wheel drive only. So maybe it's a good thing it hasn't got the full power of the Turbo S. I think they're saving that kind of output for the forthcoming GT2 RS. Anyhow, this thing is still pretty fast. It will top out 196 miles an hour. As for the acceleration, well, a bit later on in the video, I will launch the car to see how quick it is from 0 to 60 miles an hour. And if you like watching cars being launched to see how quick they are, then make sure you subscribe to this channel and hit the bell icon to turn your notifications on. That way you won't miss a single upload. The 911 Sport Classic gets carbon ceramic brakes as standard. So you've got 420 millimeter discs up front gripped by 10 piston calipers and 390 millimeter discs at the rear gripped by four piston calipers. Now let's check out their performance. Now I'm gonna see how long it takes this car to stop from 60 miles an hour or 100 kilometers an hour. So I'm gonna do a full emergency stop now. Oh, that felt really strong. Those brakes are good. It stopped in just 27 metres. That's about as good as I've ever had out of a car. Wow. The Sport Classic gets loads of optional chassis upgrades as standard. So you get adaptive dampers and the car rides 10 millimetres lower to the ground than a normal 911 Carrera. You've also got adaptive anti-roll bars which can stiffen up or slacken off depending on how you're driving. There's also rear wheel steering and torque vectoring. One thing it doesn't get though is the double wishbone suspension on the front axle like you get on the GT3. It's just the standard 911's McPherson strut system. Okay, let's see what these chassis upgrades do to how this car drives. So, whoa. <laughs> First off, the fact that this car is rear wheel drive, you know, just the feeling. It's just pushing you the whole time. I know that the four wheel drive system that Porsche uses in the turbo is rear drive bias, but ultimately when you go into a corner and it's tight and you accelerate hard, it's gonna send power to the front to pull you out. With this, it won't, you can't do that. Also, when you tip it into a corner, the steering just feels a little bit more natural because it's not corrupted by drive shafts or anything like that. And being rear wheel drive, the way you balance it out of a corner is much more important. So obviously you just apply a bit of throttle to put the weight to the back of the car a bit more and then it just helps settle the rear end. And it's just a bit more involving as a result than the four wheel drive turbo models. Thing is, is it more involving than a GT3? Well, no, it's not. It doesn't handle as well as a GT3. Driving on these really smooth German roads or indeed a racetrack, a GT3 is more fun. It just is. And if you want to see my full in-depth video review of that car, click on the pop-out banner up there. However, in the UK where the roads aren't like they are in Germany and they're a bit crap, that firm suspension in the GT3 can be a bit of a pain. And then this slightly softer car, still rear wheel drive and good fun, well, when the conditions are right, it's probably a slightly better choice for a blast at the weekend. Thing is though, weather isn't always like this, is it? And you've got a lot of power in this car. So ultimately, for all round usability, if you want to be able to go out whenever you want, come rain or shine, you are better off with Four wheel drive when you got this much power you just are then there's the gearbox so it is fun using this gearbox it's short it's snickety i actually prefer the six speed manual that you get in the gt cars in this seven speed but you know i'm splitting airs this is a good gearbox and if you want to you can heel and toe the pedals are positioned close enough together that if you want to do that yourself you can so accelerate obviously braking for a corner heel and toe down into a second it's all doable but put into sport or above and then you get auto blip and it does it for you which takes away some of the skill and some of the involvement but you can choose whether you do that or not right it's up to you i don't know if you noticed that actually did you hear that there we go <laughs> when you change down you really hear the rumble from the exhaust, the pop, 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 
and I notice that more than in the automatic Turbo S that I drive at the moment. It just seems a bit more raw because you hear more. It's supposed to do with the soundproofing, but I don't know. I don't know what's going on here. This is the reality. You come out on a twisty road and then you end up with some loon on a bike in front of you riding like they're drunk because they're a little bit bored. I think that's because he's behind a taxi going slowly. So now, not enjoying the manual so much, wish I had an auto. Still, when you take a car like this out for a blast at the weekend, you're not really planning on going somewhere, you're just driving for the hell of it. Which means that if this situation occurs, you just stop, turn around and go the other way. Which is what I'm going to do now, when I can find a place to turn around. Um, place to turn, oh here's one, let's have a go. So, now I should feel the benefit of that rear wheel steering. It makes the car more manoeuvrable. That looks like a bit of a, oh that looks like a drop. Oh no, I don't want to do this. And I've got a bus coming. Oh, dear, that's too much of a drop. <laughs> Sorry, everybody. <laughs> Let's try and turn around here. I didn't want to grind this beautiful car out. Let's try it in here. Ah, this is not good either. Can I turn around in this small space? Come on, rear wheel steering. Help me out. Uh, okay, we got it. I think we can do this. And now we have the freedom of an open road. So let's go again. Oh! <laughs> you notice the torque vectoring there when you accelerate hard out of a tight turn. It just sends power to the outer wheel. It just catapults you out of the bend. That is good. Oh yes, this is more like it. No one to spoil my fun. It does require more concentration and involvement to go fast in this car than a Turbo S. It really does. Just the fact that it's rear wheel drive. You do also notice that it's not completely bonkers ballistic fast like the Turbo S, but really, it's easily fast enough. The Sport Classic has some key design features which really make it stand out. Most notable is this big stripe on the bonnet. Love that. I also love the fact that they've actually put the creases for the bonnet closer together so they match up perfectly with the stripe. It really pleases my OCD. And then if you go low, you can notice the car's got a double bubble roof like on a GT model and that stripe just feeds straight into that gap in the roof. It is so pleasing to my eye. I like that a lot. Now you get the front bumper off the turbo but you don't have the extra lowable splitter like you get on the Turbo S. You do have the Turbo S's dynamic lighting system though which is good news. Then down the side you've got unique classic alloy wheel so 20 inches at the front 21s at the rear and there's this porsche exclusive manufacturer badging here on the side in gold then there's some more bling around the windows as well because you can get it in silver trim though if you'd prefer you can swap that out for black then you'll probably notice the big decals so you've got a huge number round door and the porsche logo down the side another key feature of the car is the fact that you get the turbo body in terms of the width so it's 1.9 meters wide as opposed to 1.85 meters for the other 911 models but unlike turbo models there's no air vents here which gave Porsche a bit of a problem cooling that turbocharged engine so what they've had to do is relocate the radiators down here and the air comes over the top of the car through the gap in the double bubble roof and then it cools the engine this way which brings me on to this feature the lovely ducktail spoiler it is so pleasing once again it's got that stripe on it this is the only model you can get with a ducktail spoiler looks so cool and then you've got gold badging here Porsche logo in gold and then 911 Sport Classic in gold as well which is quite blingy but I do like it. Now you get round tailpipes which I've got as an upgrade on my Porsche 911 Turbo S daily driver and if you want to find out more about that car what I think is like to live with click on the pop out banner up there or find the link in the description below to watch my video on that. That's thing to mention is the rear diffuser which extends ever so slightly. There is one thing I'm not so keen on about this car though it's this Porsche heritage badge here just seems a little bit cheap and tacky on what is otherwise a very classy looking car but what do you think about the design so I'll put a pinned comment where you can vote on what you think is the best looking 911 model go do it now the sport classic has two interior options there's a beige one and then there's this black with check pattern both hark back to old 911s as do the green effects on the dials Actually, I've got that on my 911 Turbo S. You also get this 911 badge there. It says Sport Classic and it's got your model designation. This one is reading 000 because it's a pre-production car. Now you might be thinking, that's a little bit too blingy for me. I don't like it. However, when you're driving along and the sun's in the right position, it actually reflects in the top part of the dash and it just looks really cool. What's also really cool is this suede-like headlining. I love that. 
Sport Classic kick plates. You can upgrade the interior to have aluminium pedals for 250 quid. Really, they should be standard. And this has got the upgraded Burmester sound system, which is brilliant, but it is a 2,200 pound option. Overall, it's a very nice interior. And I like the fact that you've got 18 way adjustment on these seats. It is easy to get comfy. Speaking of which, let's hop into the back where it's less easy to get comfy. Okay, so it's not that comfy back here, but one of the classic things about the 911 is that if you have to, you can give people a lift in the back seats, whereas many other sports cars don't even give you that option. And of course, you've got the sport classic -y pattern here to help liven things up. Though, to be fair, you can actually get a similar pattern in other 911s if you're willing to pay for it. So it doesn't really set this car apart as much as it could do. And that brings me to five annoying things about the 911 Sport Classic. Porsche's told me the exhaust fit to this car, as standard, is the same as the one that I've got on my 911 Turbo S daily driver. But to me, it just sounds a little bit better when you lift off the accelerator. It gives you some more blah, 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 kind of effect, whatever that is. I'll let you hear it for real. So, go and rev it up. You see, blah, 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 blah. I'm sure my Turbo S doesn't do that. However, just like my Turbo S, you've got a soft limiter at 3,500 RPM, which makes the car sound like a vacuum cleaner when you just throw the throttle when you're stationary. Go on, rev it! Yeah, see? I'm cleaning my carpet now. Rubbish. It's not so sport classic. I like you rev them all the way up back in the day. While you can get lane keeping assist for the Sport Classic and Porsche will charge you around £1,000 for it, you can't get adaptive cruise control where it'll keep you a safe distance from the car in front. Just basic cruise control, which is completely pointless in a European country where there's lots of traffic on the roads. Why can't you get it on this car? You can get adaptive cruise control on other Porsche models. It's, it's bonkers. I want it. I need it. I demand it! Our 911s used to have wheels made by a brand called Fuchs. And when Porsche last did a Sport Classic, it was a 997 generation, and those wheels were also made by the brand Fuchs. Now, with this latest version, they have designed the alloy wheels to look like Fuchs alloy wheels, but they're not actually made by the brand Fuchs. And that really fucks me off. You can only get this car with a manual gearbox. Now I get it, it makes it more pure to drive, and it harks back to old 911s, yada, yada, yada. But some people might want this car's design and the fact that it's a rear wheel drive with a turbo engine, but they want an automatic gearbox, and that PDK is brilliant. I actually think I'd rather have it with an automatic gearbox. Choice is a good thing. Also, because this is the manual, it's actually slightly less efficient, so it has higher emissions than the turbo, even though the turbo is slightly more powerful and heavier. The Sport Classic costs an eye-watering £214,000. A Turbo S, which is noticeably quicker, is a mere £169,000. A pittance by comparison. However, it doesn't really matter. These have all sold out. And that brings up to five good things about this car. You see, if you are one of those lucky people to get an allocation, because these are going to be rare, only 1,250 will be sold worldwide, you'll probably make quite a bit of money on it. Hashtag profits. The Sport Classic weighs in at 1,570 kilos, which is 70 kilos less than a Turbo S. Now, part of the reason for that is that it doesn't have a four-wheel drive system and it's a manual rather than automatic. But also, there's some weight-saving measures, such as a carbon fibre bonnet and carbon fibre roof. You can choose whichever two numbers go in this roundel here. Porsche has gone for six and zero to celebrate 60 years of the 911. Though they're a little bit premature because it's not actually 60 until 2023. Anyhow, if you don't like this roundel or this Porsche logo here, you can have them removed because they're stickers. Don't remove them yourself, you just deselect them when you're buying the car. Though I personally quite like it. The Sport Classic gets a nose lift as standard, which is handy if you need to drive up a curb or a steep driveway. Also, it's linked to the satellite navigation system, which means the car will remember where you last lifted the nose. If you want it to, it will automatically lift at that location next time. Clever. Because it's not got a four-wheel drive system, the fruit on the Sport Classic is four litres larger than the Turbo S at 132 litres, and it does feel slightly less uncomfortable to sit in. Now, if you want to, you can pay Porsche an extra £4,000 for a bespoke Sport Classic luggage set. And if you buy this car, you then unlock the ability to buy a Sport Classic watch. Though it does cost £12,500. What I do is just get a smart watch like this and then get a Sport Classic face. I've done that with a Rolex face. Look, this is effectively a Rolex, but it's a lot less. It's the same, really. 
Most of the people that buy this Sport Classic will use it for a blast at the weekends or they'll probably put it in storage and wait for it to accumulate in value. However, sometimes they might need to go into town. That's where there are a few downsides to its sporty nature. I'm in the middle of Stuttgart, I'm on a slight incline at the lights and I've got to do a hill start. Obviously, I have hill hold control, but now I'm pulling away, slightly heavy clutch. I didn't stall it, which is good, but when you're driving around in traffic, Having a manual gearbox is definitely less good than having an automatic. <laughs> We're gonna to have to stop again, see? Oh, my left foot is doing far too much work. <laughs> yes. They're not beeping at me. Oh good, we're going again, left foot. After a while, you do notice that this clutch is quite heavy. Oh, my driving's a bit jerky. Can't fault the brakes though. Sometimes carbon ceramic brakes can be grabby when you're going at low speeds. These are smooth. Turbo S is better in town. Definitely, definitely, definitely. What I can't complain about though is the suspension. When you've got it in soft setting, it does a really good job of dealing with bumps. So it's actually quite comfy. Another thing that's good is the rear wheel steering. It just makes the car a little bit more maneuverable than a 911 would be without it. Then there's the steering. So this has the upgraded Power Steering Plus, which just makes it a bit lighter when you're at town speeds. It is a 200 euro option, but it's probably worth it if you're gonna be driving in town, which this car isn't really the best 911 for. Does that make any sense? What's the Sport Classic like when you're driving on the motorway? Well, once again, that manual gearbox is a little bit of a pain. So you've got seven gears, right? Until you get used to it, you find yourself just in the wrong gear. Like, where is it? Where's seven? I can't even find seven. Where is seventh? Have I lost seventh? Sixth? Seventh. There it is. <laughs> I have done this before, people, honest. So, you know, finally, you're cruising in seventh for economy. And then you need to overtake. You absolutely positively have to change down again, even though you've got bags of torque from this engine. So here I am. I need to accelerate. I'm flooring it. Yeah, you've got to go and change down if you want to accelerate. If you've got an automatic, it does it all for you, which makes cruising and instantly overtaking a lot easier. There is an advantage though to the manual gearbox. So one of the problems I have with my Turbo S is the fact that I like to run it in sports mode for the engine. That means that you've got the sharp throttle response. However, you can't actually separate the response of the engine from the gearbox also being in sporty mode, which means it's always holding you in too low a gear, which isn't so relaxing. You don't have that problem here because with the manual, you're choosing the gear, then the sport mode just controls the throttle response, which is good. One thing that's not quite so good though is the noise. So 911s are always noisy. You get a little bit confused because you think they're luxury cars based on their interior quality. However, they're just not as relaxing as something like a Audi RS6. And if you want to see my full and definitive review of that car, one that I actually ran for a while, click on the pop-out banner up there. And this Sport Classic is a little bit noisier than a standard 911 because it's got less soundproofing and you get such a noise from those big rear tires just echoing around the cabin. Anyway, let me have another go getting to seven, see if I can do it easier. No, yeah, six. Seventh. Okay, I think I figured that out. You can't go from fifth straight into seventh. I mean, you probably shouldn't do that anyway, but sometimes I like to skip a gear because I'm lazy. So you have to go sixth, seventh. It's not the car's fault, it was my fault. Porsche has a Sport Classic Audi Nord 60 in 4.1 seconds. But what will it really do in my hands, being a manual? Let's do it. What we got? 4.53. All right, let's have another go. See if I can go quicker this time. Yes, 4.50, one last go. That's better. What have we got? 4.46. It's not quite 4.1 though. Manuals are just a bit hard to launch. They probably had a racing driver doing it when they got the 4.1. I'm semi-pro. So then what's my final verdict on the Porsche 911 Sport Classic? Should you avoid it? Should you consider it? Should you shortlist it? Or should you just go right ahead and buy it? Well, it's a Porsche 911, so it's brilliant. However, if you take that out of the equation and you compare it to other 911s, and if you forget all about the investing and how much this could be worth in future, and you look at it at the price it is and what you get for your money and the other cars in the range, I would say 
avoid the 911 Sport Classic. Reason being, if you want outright performance and everyday usability and you've got a lot of cash, get a Porsche 911 Turbo S. It's actually cheaper than this. Also, if you want a real pure driving 911 and you're gonna go on track occasionally, get a 911 GT3 manual or automatic, you decide. Also, it's cheaper than this. If you want a rear wheel drive turbocharged 911 that's great on the road, get yourself a 911 GTS and spec it up with a lot of the options that you could actually fit from this car to that car. However, if you want the best value for money and a car that's fast enough for the road and really good fun, just get a normal entry level Carrera, manual or automatic. You decide, you'll save a bunch of cash. Anyway, I hope you all enjoyed that bit of useful Porsche 911 buying advice and that you enjoyed this video as well. If you did, give it a like. Let me know what you think of my verdict in the comments below. Click on those windows there for some more videos and on that box there to go to CarWow to sell your car. All you have to do is upload some photos and our dealers will bid on your car and you'll know how much it's really worth. Thanks for watching.